Well, hope everyone is having a great week at the convention. So much is going on and has gone on. It's a pleasure to be back with you guys. I'm Eric Bridges, Executive Director of ACB, and I'm pleased to be joined today by our Chief Financial Officer, Nancy Becker. How's it going, Nancy? It is going well, Eric. How about yourself? Ah, it's, uh, these are really, really busy times, but I, I think uh, things are going really well. And we're really happy to be here today to talk with you about the last several years within this organization uh, from a financial perspective and what that has really sort of enabled us to, to do for our membership in the broader community. And so much of the work uh, that is done that's external, uh, you see every day with regard to the advocacy initiatives, our communications, all of that. But what isn't always seen is the work that's going on behind the scenes uh, with Nancy and her crew, both in, in the Minneapolis office, but also within our thrift stores. And uh, Nancy and I work very closely. A tremendous amount of really good stuff has occurred over the last several years. And it's, it's uh, initiatives that, that the board, uh, the leadership of this organization has helped to, to lead. And what I thought we would do this morning is uh, Nancy, have you kind of talk a little bit about the three accounts that we have uh, as the American Council of the Blind, what they are, uh, why they matter, and what has taken place in particular with these three investment accounts over the last, let's say, five years or so. We can't do what we do without funding, without a stable uh, stream of, of money. And these three accounts enable us to do the work of the organization, to keep the lights on, to employ folks so that we can provide services for the membership, as well as at times for folks outside our, our own community to call in and maybe in crisis. So this stuff, uh, from my perspective, from an operational perspective, is critically important. And so Nancy, why don't you kind of talk us through this? I sure can, Eric. First, um, ACB, I'd like everybody to know that ACB has an investment committee that meets periodically to review how our investments are performing. And we also asked our investment advisor to provide insight on how, what the market trends are. That's right. And, and Nancy, our investment committee is composed of members of our board of directors. Uh, you, you help to staff it. I'm, I uh, attend as well as Tony Stevens, correct? Correct. Correct. So we have a group of, I think, I think there's five people on that committee. Mm -hmm. um, the investment committee has an investment policy, which our, our investment advisor utilizes when making investment decisions with our investments. So our investment advisor doesn't randomly just choose what to do. He has to follow our policy that we have set up with our three investment accounts. So ACB has three separate investment accounts, which are the restricted and endowed fund account, the legacy account, and the board designated reserve account. So the first one is the restricted and endowed funds account. And this one is restricted primarily for the student scholarships. And within this account, this is further restricted for specific scholarships. So there has been some donors that have given money for a scholarship. And so we keep that separate from the other scholarship awards. The second is the legacy account fund. And this is where the legacies and big quests go and it helps to meet our operating expenses. The third account is the board designated reserves. And this consists of unrestricted and reserve, the reserves designated by the board. And it more or less functions as a rainy day fund, right? When we Correct. have issues like last year. Correct. So this, so if we need to take funds out for operating expenses, 
we need to request the money be removed and the board needs to approve any money that's withdrawn from this account. So there is some, um, there's a plan in place for having to remove money from those accounts. So then the next thing is the allocation of ACB's investments are based on a balanced portfolio, which means the risk level we are taking with our investments is in the middle. So ACB's rate of return when the stock market is having an outstanding year will be less than the market. But as you saw last year, when the stock market plunged, the value of the investments declined, but not nearly as much as the market did. The next thing is within these, um, the balance portfolio, our assets are allocated further between equities, fixed income, and cash and equivalents. So you're asking where, where, where have we come? Where have we come from? At the end of 2016, there were two investment accounts, which were the endowed and reserve accounts, and they were valued at $2.1 million. So at this time, ACB did not have a policy in place on how to allocate any bequests that we had received. So this led to an establishment of the legacy fund account in October of 2017 and a legacy endowment policy in 2018. The endowed policy defined how undesignated bequests would be allocate, alloc allocated between the investment accounts and to ensure there would be sufficient funds in the board designated reserve account to meet operating expenses if needed. And as we saw in 2020, 2020, we did have enough money in our reserve account so that we were able to help meet operating expenses last year. Then in 2019, a legacy spending policy was established where the board would approve the use of a portion of the funds in the legacy account each year to help meet cash flow for the following year. And in 20 and 21, we did take some money out of the legacy account to help meet cash flow. And now you ask how much is in our investment accounts. So between the three investment accounts that we have at the end of June, 2021, the value of our investments in it is $5.2 million. Wow, what a story. It is a big change from what we were in 2016. So obviously uh, some of this is market driven uh, with you know, the market continuing to charge forward and us having exposure to the market. But then in addition to that, uh, Folks have, have uh, included us in their, in their estate planning, and that has helped us immensely and helped us uh, not just establish the legacy fund, but to actually have uh, meaningful monies in there uh, that, as Nancy said, we can, uh, you know, per the, per the, the policy, uh, take out a certain percentage every year uh, to help support the work of the organization. Isn't that right, Nancy? That is correct. I would say that we have been very fortunate in the last couple of years that we have had several large bequests um, come in to our organization, and we are very, very thankful for that. So there is another component uh, that is very visible during this time of year that all of us see during the convention, and, and that is ACB's relationships with, with corporate America. And while we have had you know, relationships with companies for well over two decades, it's safe to say that over the last decade in particular, as we have needed to advocate uh, around the area, the broad area of technology and digital accessibility, uh, we have been able to 
forge really meaningful relationships with a lot of very large and influential companies uh, that happen to be based here in the US. Some of this has to do with the implementation of the 21st Century Communications and Video Accessibility Act, uh, but also a, just a lot of advocacy has gone on with these individual companies. And, and so it's been a different way of coming at uh, revenue, uh, but you know, a couple of our core values are collaboration and initiative and extending a, a, a hand or outreach with companies that may have had a product or a service that was accessible, but through a recent update or a new product being launched, something is no longer accessible to our community uh, or through companies just really truthfully not knowing uh, that their products aren't accessible and us reaching out, we've been able to forge some really dynamic relationships, which have been highlighted this week. To go along with that, as we have developed these relationships, one of the, one of the really unique aspects of what I believe is a, is a strength area for, for us as an organization is because of how we've uh, come at trying to solve these problems in a collaborative fashion and oftentimes succeeding, the, these companies mm -hmm. are seeing the value in working with us and that it isn't just merely a transactional sort of thing. The companies that you see sponsoring ACB's convention this week, many of which we've been working with for five or more years. Some are newer and that's fantastic. But my point in saying this is that uh, they understand the value, they view us as a, as a partner and they want to give back to help support our mission. The, the accessibility journey is never gonna end with these companies. It's, it's always gonna continue on. And when you look back at our 2012 convention, we raised about $82,000 in corporate sponsorships. But if you fast forward to 2019, it exceeds $330,000. So a lot has happened. A lot of this is that we have developed a reputation as, as a leader and an influencer in this area. Much of it has to do with our own members uh, and their, their interest and desires for the organization to engage with companies. Uh, also, you know, our committees, the Information Access Committee, as well as, as uh, leaders uh, from our board um, have done tremendous amounts of work to help educate and make these companies aware of our needs. And that ultimately our desire is not to have something that's accessible, but something that is truly usable to our, our community. And in many instances, we've succeeded. And you've heard about some of these specific examples over the course of this week. So, you know, I, I, it's something that organizationally we should be very proud of. But it's also gone a long way over the last decade to helping our, our own bottom line so that we can continue to do more uh, on behalf of, of ACB for our members and the broader community. So that's, that's, a, that's a really important area. And then really the final area, Nancy, I'll hand it back to you. It's an area that folks I don't, I don't believe have a lot of exposure to. Many of you may know that we manage two thrift stores in the state of Texas. Um, and we've been in the thrift store business, gosh, for uh, likely over three decades. Uh, but Nancy, why don't you talk a little bit about the thrift store business and what it has meant over the last few years to ACB? 
So first you may ask, why is ACB in the thrift store business? That's a so, legitimate question. <laughs> it is. Why, why is an organization that's supposed to advocate for the blind, why are they in the thrift store business? But the intent of ACBES is that the net profit from the thrift stores would help contribute to oper uh, contribute money to ACB. Um, over the years, we have had um, a lot more thrift stores than we do right now, but we have found that the two thrift stores that um, are closest together have benefited us the most. So we are we right now we have our Amarillo and Lubbock, Texas thrift stores. So when you when we look at how much money the thrift stores have contributed to to us each year, it started out to be around twenty three thousand dollars a year in two thousand fifteen, and we did have I think about five thrift stores at that time, to three hundred thirty six thousand dollars in two thousand nineteen, and when you guys say three hundred and three hundred thirty six thousand, that's about fifteen percent of ACB's revenue. So that's, that is quite a bit of money that the thrift stores to do donate to ACB. And when you add that in with the convention uh, funds, uh, that's nearly 30%, correct? So that is correct. It's a significant amount of money. And uh, it also is a significant amount of time. Nancy is responsible for managing those stores. And uh, her colleague, Erica Keller, also uh, assists in that. And it's, it's, been, uh, it's been challenging last year. The, the stores were, were closed for a while, correct, Nancy, as part yeah. of the pandemic? They were closed for, I think it was the month of April. And then when the stores opened up, the retail was a little bit slower than it was before. But we take care of everything from um, um, talking to the manager, looking at what the store needs. We're looking at marketing. So anything that has to do with the thrift store business, Erica and myself manage. And at times it can be a little bit challenging, but overall I do think that, you know, the benefit that we have is we are able to contribute to ACB. Yeah, it's, uh, again, it's another really excellent story to, to share that, not a lot of uh, people really fully understand. And, you know, that's okay. But I, I do think that it, these are areas of, our, of the business of ACB that, that are important for folks to, to better understand. I know that uh, every year, Michael Garrett, as, as he does as the chair of the ACB ES uh, board, provides a report. And, um, Obviously, the last few have been really very positive, but wanted to kind of take you in a little bit to the um, to Nancy's world and just talk a little bit about it. So, Nancy, thank you for that. Well, Any other thoughts before we depart? No, I, I actually I'm I'm enjoying the week. I think the convention is great. If you have um, participated in the convention and would love to. Um, you know, shout out to us. We would love to see that. And I'll tell you something, I am so looking forward to getting together in Omaha in 2022. I miss not seeing members and attendees at the convention and throughout the year. I totally agree. It is, uh, uh, it is so much, just, it's just so nice to be together. And I think at times we might have taken a little bit of that for granted. And the last, the last year has really shown us um, that you know, we, we can do this. Uh, we can conduct a really successful virtual convention, but having people together, uh, being able to share in fellowship and, and just hang out, um, it's, uh, it's hard to replace uh, 100%. So looking forward to seeing you all next year in Omaha. And uh, please have a great rest of your convention. Take care.